Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to help me break down DFS this weekend and some of the most undervalued plays on the slate. What's happening, Jim? It's all good, Greg. I think it's a pretty fun slate from a value perspective. We got good plays at running back, good plays at wide receiver, nothing at quarterback from a value perspective. But hey, you know, it's it's that kind of week where we have good plays at the important positions and some tough decisions at quarterback. So an interesting slate for sure. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. So many one o'clock games. I gotta. I'm already preparing for my four o'clock nap. <laughs> and you should get it too, because it looks like one of those games could be pretty good, but a lot of big injuries for Packers and Cowboys, which is kind of killing the buzz. So I think a 4 p.m. nap sounds pretty great. Nap, laundry. That's what, that's what they're telling me, right? That's what Keenan Thompson's telling me. It's laundry night on Sunday night. I'm just gonna move that up. The Sunday afternoon and be ready to rock. But playing at 1 o'clock, so I don't have to worry about missing this game, it's the Arizona Cardinals and the Cincinnati Bengals. We talked about this game a lot on yesterday's show. But your undervalued quarterback is still Kyler Murray. This week he is priced at $7,400. We talked a lot yesterday about this one, specifically about Andy Dalton and Kyler Murray. Why do you like Murray as the undervalued play? Yeah, I think it's $7,400. It helps account for some of the deficiencies in this game. With no John Ross and no Christian Kirk, I think you can have legitimate fears about this game hitting the under, even though it's been a pretty popular game for fantasy so far. I could see it disappointing. But even if it does, Kyler Murray can still play off or pay off for fantasy because of what he does as a rusher. We've seen him get 12 rush attempts over the past two games. He has cashed in on those rush attempts as well, which gives him a pretty steady floor. And we've seen that floor all year long. He has scored at least 16 FanDuel points in every game. And we've seen at least components for a ceiling. He is throwing the ball a lot and he is running. Those are two things that you want for a quarterback to have a ceiling in a DFS. And Kyler Murray does have both of those. We just haven't seen that ceiling as of yet. But he's facing a Bengals defense that allowed Mason Rudolph to do some damage on Sunday night, even though he was doing nothing from an ADOT perspective. So even if this Cardinals offense continues to be a little bit, you know, a little short happy, a little bit, you know, dump off happy, they can still pay off. Kyler specifically can still pay off. So I'm going to go here. I do have some concerns about this game overall. But I still think that Murray can pay off despite that. So, yeah, it's a, there are some elements that could lead this, to this game disappointing. But I still think it makes sense to invest in Kyler Murray for just $7,400. $7,400 is a fantastic price for Kyler Murray. And we're still waiting for this Arizona Cardinals offense to be unleashed. Maybe it's this Sunday. Even if it's not, we expect Kyler Murray to have a big-time game. So get him in your lineups, especially at this price. Let's move over to the running backs here now, Jim. And that gets... Us back to New York, where you're pumping up Wayne Gallman. We have seen Saquon Barkley at practice the last couple of games, so this may be, we're maybe quickly coming to the end of Wayne Gallman time, but not yet. He's facing a Minnesota defense where I don't think a lot of players would probably want to have a Giants running back in there. But $6,300, you're still sticking with Gallman. How come? Yeah, definitely keep an eye on Saquon Barkley because there were just some Twitter clips of him at practice and he looks pretty good. So if he doesn't play, obviously disregard it. Or if he does play, disregard this. But Wayne Goldman, I think in the workload that he got back in week four, it was a workload that we can use kind of regardless of whom he is playing. He had 18 carries and seven targets in that game, which is a monster workload for a guy who is $6,300. He also still has a very good offensive line. He has a competent quarterback and they're five point dogs against the Vikings, but this Viking team seems a tiny bit dysfunctional right now with Stephon Diggs skipping out on practice, maybe not reporting in time for the game on Sunday. There is a lot of turmoil on that Vikings team, and that could lead to a better game for the Giants than Vegas is expecting as of right now. So I think Wayne Gallman could get a lead here, could be running behind a good offensive line, and should get volume in the passing game. And to me, that will always trump rushing efficiency. If a guy could work in the passing game, I don't care how inefficient he is as a runner. I just want those targets. Wayne Gallman got those targets back in week four. So if Saquon can go, obviously we're not going here. But I think that if Wayne Gallman is once again the workhorse back in this team, he's someone I'm going to want quite a bit of at $6,300. A workhorse running back is tough to come by. And at $6,300, well, it's a fantastic price to get him at. The Vikings defense may not be what it once was this weekend. You can expect a lot of Wayne Gallman as long as Saquon Barkley doesn't play. Gallman, a fine option on this FanDuel slate. Up next, that brings us... Another running back, and it's David Montgomery. The Bears are in London taking on the Oakland Raiders, and we have seen the usage increase for David Montgomery every single game. Yards per carry, not so much. 
but the usage is there. Sooner or later, it's all going to add up to fantasy goodness. At $5,700, hopefully that week is this week. Yeah, what better time for a guy to finally capitalize on usage than against the Oakland Raiders? And even though Mitchell Trubisky will not play in this game, which is a legitimate concern because... You know, Mitchell Trubisky struggled, but Chase Daniel last year, you look at his efficiency metrics, he was about 0.3 points worse on a per dropback basis than Mitchell Trubisky, which is a pretty significant number, but you're putting him up against the Raiders. You're putting him in a pretty good offensive system. I think that Chase Daniels should be able to at least move the ball, kind of similar to what he did against the Vikings on Sunday. And if he does that, it would bode well for David Montgomery. 69% of the snaps in week four for him. He also played at least 60% of the snaps back in week three. He's gotten heavy, heavy volume each of the past three games, at least 13 carries and at least three targets in all those games. And if you give me, you know, 15 or so carries and five targets against the Raiders, I would assume that guy would probably do pretty well regardless of who his quarterback is. So I have some concerns around this Bears offense with Daniel starting over Trubisky, but I think that this matchup at the Raiders helps alleviate those concerns. The bookmakers are saying that the Bears should still be fine even without Trubisky. So I think that it does make sense to keep going with some Bears here, and Montgomery is cheap enough where he can help mitigate some of those concerns around Trubisky. So David Montgomery, $5,700. As you said, Greg, it should come together pretty soon. I wouldn't be shocked at all if it happens to be this weekend. I'm totally with you. Against the Raiders, here's a good spot for him. We also thought it was a good spot for Marlon Mack last week. Obviously, it didn't work out. These London games tend to be low scoring and tend to be kind of a drag, which means it's probably pretty good for the running back. This Bears team is going to have to rely on David Montgomery even more with Chase Daniel at quarterback, and there's a lot to like, especially at this price of under $6,000. For the wide receiver position this week, all you need to know is the name Tate because... That, that's all that matters. Let's start with Auden Tate. He's going to get the start this week with John Ross on IR, facing off against Arizona. We know Tyler Boyd's the wide receiver one, and we know how bad Arizona is against tight ends. When you're getting a player at $5,300 who's going to see a lot of targets and a ton of snaps, you have to like him. That's what Auden Tate is. And the thing that makes me feel pretty good here about Auden Tate is that he was playing snaps even before John Ross got hurt. They go with a lot of three wide receiver sets, and Auden Tate was the guy playing heavy snaps both in week three and week four, and he kind of came through on that volume because he got 10 targets in one of the games. He has 22% of the team's targets the past two games combined. He has a couple of deep looks. He has a couple of red zone targets as well. So he's getting high leverage looks in an offense that should be able to move the ball, even without John Ross, against this Cardinals defense. We haven't seen the Bengals up against a defense as bad as Arizona so far this year. So although they have disappointed and their offensive line is a mess, I think they should be able to move the ball here and score some points, especially with this game being at home against a West Coast team playing a 1 p.m. game. That sets up well for Auden Tate. He is six foot five, which means that his body is made for work in the red zone, which means the touchdown equity here is pretty good. And you could look at Tyler F. Eifert as a value play here on this Bengals team, but Eifert's snap rate will not be nearly as high as Auden Tate's. And I think that there's a lot more shakiness with him because he doesn't get as many targets as Auden Tate either. So for $5,300, if I want to spend down within this Bengals offense, I do think that Auden Tate is the best route. Tyler Boyd is also undervalued at $6,700, but I think that Auden Tate here is a really good way to save money, get a good floor, and have a decent ceiling as well. Absolutely. You want many members of this Bengals offense, and at $5,300, you're getting Tate, someone who's going to be valuable for you at a really, really good price. Auden Tate has already gotten the snaps, as Jim was just mentioning, and now I think the usage will be even stronger. Zach Taylor's going to use the weapons that he has. Auden Tate is clearly one of those guys. But that's not the only Tate we're using here this week, because Golden Tate makes his return to the lineup against Minnesota for the Giants on Sunday. Craziest thing? I don't think Fandle realizes that because Golden Tate is priced at $4,500. You're getting a starting wide receiver who's probably the 1B in his offense for under five grand, significantly, significantly cheaper. Why wouldn't you start Golden Tate this week? I think you could have concerns around there being a lot of mouths in this offense, especially if Saquon Barkley does play. Maybe you get worried about that because Sterling Shepard has looked really good. Uh, Evan Engram is obviously very good too, and the Vikings have struggled against tight ends so far this year, so maybe that's your concern is that there won't be enough volume to go around, but I think that's kind of the only concern with Golden Tate, as mentioned, $4,500, and this Viking secondary has a good reputation. But they haven't been that good this year. After Xavier Rhodes and Harrison Smith, there's kind of a lot missing there. And, uh, you know, Xavier Rhodes is probably going to see a lot of time with Sterling Shepard, given they'll probably play outside more often than Golden Tate does. And Harrison Smith will probably be occupied with Evan Engram. So we're going to see a pretty good matchup here for Golden Tate. He is at home. He has a good offensive line. 
pretty good quarterback with Daniel Jones as well. I think that sets up really well for Golden Tate at $4,500. I would say the floor here, even though he is coming off a suspension, is pretty good. I would say that my level of confidence in Golden Tate is is high enough to use him at $4,500. He is not someone you need to use in every tournament lineup. I think that there is a lot of credence to maybe not going here, just because, again, there are some reasons to believe that the, there could be a disappointment here. But I think for a cash game roster, Golden Tate makes way too much sense. He's just too cheap at $4,500. And in cash games, I will happily take those savings. I will happily take that volume and plug in Golden Tate at forty five. Absolutely. You'll definitely take that value at $4,500. A couple different directions you could go. And you heard why well, you may want to be a little bit nervous, but at this price, I'm not even thinking about it. Maybe that's wrong of me, but Golden Tate, he's getting in my lineup. He's fresh, he's healthy, and the price very clearly is right. One last player to get to, Jim, and that's our tight end this week. It's Jimmy Graham against Dallas. We were just talking before how Green Bay and Dallas, they're both really beat up right now. We don't exactly know who's going to be active and who's going to be inactive. But Jimmy Graham... He's going to play, and we saw once Devontae Adams went out, they fed Jimmy Graham the ball. He's priced at $5,500, which is relatively cheap for the tight end position. Why do you like Graham this Sunday? For a lot of the reasons you mentioned, because Jimmy Graham did get fed in that game against Philadelphia. He finished that game with nine targets, and four of those targets were in the red zone. And where does Devontae Adams get most of his work? It's inside the red zone, and he is no longer, I would assume, there. It sounds like he's going to sit this weekend, which should open up high leverage targets for Jimmy Graham. Again, nine total targets, four red zone targets last week. And last year, I didn't really use Graham because it kind of seemed like he was dust. You know, he wasn't running downfield routes. He wasn't getting targets down there. But back in week one, when he was fully healthy, we did see Graham get a good number of downfield targets, but then he got hurt. It seems like he is closer to full health now. He's had extra rest after they played on Thursday last week, and his snap rate went back up to 70% in that one. And as mentioned, he did get a lot of volume. So I'm pretty scared of this Packers offense as they head down to Dallas, a really good defense, and they're playing without Devontae Adams. That's a downgrade for the entire offense. But I think that Jimmy Graham and Marquez Valdez-Scantling are two guys we can still trust here because we should expect spikes in volume for them. So Graham's my favorite. Tight end is hard to find value for this week, but Graham is $5,500, should play a lot of snaps, should see a lot of targets. And at that position, that's kind of all I can ask for at this salary. Absolutely. Targets, snaps, and the ability to score a touchdown is exactly what you're looking for from Jimmy Graham at this price. Being one of Aaron Rodgers' most reliable and favorite targets, that's a bonus on top. Against Dallas, they're going to need Jimmy Graham to have a big game, and so will fantasy owners. Make sure you get him in there. And Jim, that's going to do it for us here in the FanDuel Hurry Up, and this is the last time we're going to be able to speak to each other for a week, which is probably a good thing because you're not going to want to talk to me after the Yankees sweep the Twins. I forgot about that. That's disappointing. Um, it's probably going to happen, Greg, so I'm on board with this. Like, that's fine. The Twins made it. That's life of a Twins fan. You just want to get to the postseason so that the Yankees can sweep you. There's no Byron Buxton, so I've accepted my fate. I won't even be that mad. I, I've accepted it already, so we're good. It, preemptively good. Spoken like a true Jet fan, already a loser, <laughs> saying, it's cool. I don't care if we lose. What kind of mentality is that? Hopefully, when you're setting your FanDuel lineups, you don't have that mentality. Hey, at least I put in my lineup. I paid FanDuel. I'm good. No, you want to win. These picks will help you do it. He's Jim Sonis, a loser. I'm Greg Sussman, a winner. We'll see you tomorrow. Gabe Morenci will give us more winning picks. Have a great night, everybody.